You guys, I have been so blessed to start doing improv, and I want to introduce you to an amazing improv instructor. You guys, this is Jared, <laughs> Joy of Improv. Hi, Jared. Hi, Kimberly. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for joining today. Um, and I, I love your class. Thank you. Absolutely love your class. It's actually changed my life in so many ways. I never knew improv could do so much in terms of like changing me as a person and opening doors for me. Um, and so I just have a few questions I want to ask you and I want to um, help our viewers to get a good idea of what improv is and how it can really, um, really help and change their lives too. So there's a lot of different types of artistic expression. You know, there's acting on stage, there's acting in theater, there's acting in film. Um, there's different ways to get outside yourself. Uh, what drew you in just as a person? Yeah. And what made you actually want to teach as well? Sure, I'll answer both of those. Um, so I was not drawn to improv as a way of artistic expression. <laughs> I was not really even wanting to do it at all. Um, I remember watching my college roommate, Eddie Graham, uh, perform in improv shows in college. And I thought to myself, wow, Eddie is so fearless and he has so much fun. And I really admired that about him. But I also admired the uh, the vulnerability that, that occurs when you're on stage and you're making things up, whether it's in a comedic scene or a dramatic scene um, or a very sad scene, because those you can have all types of variety in a show. And I, four years later, um, I was working at a company in San Francisco and I had this team and my team told me, Jared, we love you so much outside of work. You're the best guy, the nicest guy, we, and you're just so lovable outside of work. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> yeah, uh, basically they were telling me that I was kind of an ass and that <laughs> I was too intense and I would move too quickly. Um, and they wanted me to slow down, over communicate things to them mm. and be more vulnerable with them. Mm -hmm. And so I was very lucky. I had seven people on my team at the time, but they felt enough trust to tell me that. That's um, loving to tell you that instead of going behind your back. But they must that, that they must really care about you to to just be up front and pay yeah, to your attention. Yeah, they did. They were really a great team, really good people, and very lucky to have them. That's what led me to improv, actually, because they said we wish you would be more vulnerable with us. Oh gosh! Wow. Or remembered that class. I remembered how Eddie in college was so vulnerable on stage and so brave. I remember wow. how clear of a communicator you have to be in improv, how you can't go too fast. Mm -hmm. um, I remembered how, because if you go too fast and you're not clear, you leave your partners behind. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't and listen, you can't to, listen well, if you're, right. if you're going just too fast. You miss exactly the opportunity. To them. You don't make your partners important. You don't make them look good. Mm -hmm. Then you don't, you don't see the opportunities in front of you. You don't see who's talented. You don't see the solutions to problems. If you're going so fast and you're you're in like a hustle or survival mode, or if you're in that, it, it kills creativity, you mm. know, a type of, yeah. um, or in that aggressiveness wow. takes you, your view. And from having like listening where you're listening in 360 degrees, it gives you tunnel vision. Mm. And so you're just seeing you know, uh, what's kind of in front of you and, and you might be, um, you might be like too aggressive or no. And so I decided to do improv and try it out. And I did it at bats improv in San Francisco. And my first teacher was this lady who's a, a legend and who's amazing. Oh, I had no idea who she was at the time. I had no idea. She's so amazing. Rebecca Stockley. Rebecca Stockley. Okay. Wow. My mom. She is the improv mom to many performers and many, awesome. Uh, workers around the world. She oh teaches, she's taught at Pixar. Uh, oh she's taught at Apple, Stanford, Telltale Games, Lucas Arts. She's taught all over. She oh my takes, gosh. Yeah, she takes storytellers yeah. and helps them be more creative. Oh my and gosh. She, yeah, and she helps people um, all over the world, whatever their role is, uh, be a better communicator, be a better storyteller, be a better listener, be a better problem solver. Because all these skills really help in different areas of life. Uh, that's and work. 
That is so um, interesting and amazing because being an actor, like I'm coming to improv as an act, as an actor, like just getting started, you know, and that's how I found your class. And, and I love that um, as an actor, I get so much out of it in terms of like my skills and things that I'm working on, but you came at it, not as an actor, but as a professional. I didn't want to be an actor and now I am one. I didn't want That's to. That's so amazing. That's so amazing. What are some, for those who don't know um, improv, what are some basics um, about improv? Because it's all playing. You're yeah. playing the whole time. But obviously it did so much for you and guiding you in your path as a professional. For those who are actors, what are some benefits we can get from improv? And like you've been sharing your story as a professional speak to the professionals about why they should try improv. I mean, obviously it helped you to be more vulnerable, more warm and more approachable and more clear in your communication. So that right there is a huge incentive for professionals. Um, and, and empathy. It really helps oh, with empathy. Yeah. Like all of the, thing, like uh, both acting training. If you read a lot of fiction, you start to empathize more with characters. That's a thing that's, been proven if you play characters that are not like yourself you start to develop empathy for those types of people mm -hmm. if you play with other people who are different than you and you accept them and their points of view you learn about how they see the world that increases empathy all these things all, uh, all increase empathy i think alan alda uh, writes a lot about it so I love alan alda oh my gosh he's one of, he's one of my favorite you actors. know he loves improv too right really uh, he, he uses improv and theater games to teach scientists how to communicate better. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's it's called so the, amazing. I think it's called the Alda Institute of Science and Technology. I, I might be messing up the name. I'm not remembering correctly, but it's at Stony Brook University. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh and my he, gosh. Was, as an actor, how does it, how can improv help you in your process? So there, there are many ways improv can help actors. I think one way is to make the work less precious, to make, to let go of being a perfectionist, to uh, celebrate mistakes and enjoy them, right? So that's one thing that we talk a lot about in improv is, you know, the circus or going woohoo and like celebrating your mistake. It's not, celebrating your mistake is not, it's not about, you know, some people don't like that or some people hear that and they might not like that idea. And I think, it might be because they're they don't they're not thinking about it from the way of it's not about it's not about um, irresponsibly celebrating all mistakes in a way that is like not taking accountability. Yeah, it's yeah. more it's more more about acknowledging it, listening to that, learning from it, and moving forward. Deliver on stage or on camera exactly the same way. If you're doing that, that's robotic, right? Yeah. We want to see people be a little bit messy. We want to see them be alive in acting. You know, like I, there's this guy in the Bay Area, L. Peter Callender, and he says, what is acting? And I remember being in his classroom. It was like this master class, and I, I didn't know what to say. Like, and everybody had a bunch of different answers. And he's like, well, what is one of the first things that your mom or dad tells you when you're a child? Like, what is one of the first things you say? He says, behave, you know, because it's behavior. And it's human behavior and a way of acting. It's, it's just being, you know, and, and behaving. And we're and, and being truthful in those imaginary circumstances. And we all know how to do that when we're children. And we lose that the older, the older we yeah, get. We, you know, life, life happens. You know, life happens. And sometimes life beats us down. And we forget that we used to think amazing thoughts. We used to think out of the box, and those are actually tools that we need as adults. But I agree with the improv helps you connect to that. Improv, there's this, there's this philosophy of yes and. Sure. Can you tell us a little bit about kind of where that foundation comes from and what it and what it means in in terms of the whole of of improv and how we can work with that? Yeah. Um, so I would say that yes and is this idea of I listen to what you say and I add on to it, or I listen to what you say, and I make it important, and I react to it from my character's point of view and emotional place. Mm -hmm. 
it's not just me adding ideas onto your ideas or adding ideas and blowing past your idea and then making my thing. Mm, what, ha- yeah. what happens is sometimes you get really nervous or you get fearful. And when you're coming mm-hmm. from a place of nervousness or fear, you have stuff going on in your head and you want to latch onto that and, and throw those ideas out because that's something that makes you feel in control. Ah, okay. But improv is like a practice. It's a practice of mindfulness. It's a practice of making your partner look good. It's a practice of listening. And it's a practice of letting go of control. That's where the vulnerability comes in. That's where the spontaneity comes in. That's where the ability to be changed comes in. Letting go of control. Um, And so, yeah. So a very simple um, version of yes and would be just you say something to me and I just say yes and but I make whatever I say based on what you just said. Mm. So it, like there's a game um, where it's like, remember when we went to Guatemala on our 20th honeymoon? And you might say yes. And we arrived, you know, in the airport on that little puddle jumper plane. Yes. And you carried my bag for me because I because my arm was broken. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, you know, and it, it could just go from there. And it and, goes. Yeah. We're just yeah. working off what just came before. But yes, and can even be simpler. It can be it can be me giving you an imaginary gift. I I pick up a present. I say, Kimberly, I got you a present. You take the present. You honor the size and weight of it. You react emotionally to the fact that I got you a present. You open the present. You react with emotion to what you see in the box. You say what you see in the box. These are all little yes ands. Mm-hmm. You're at yes anding me, giving you a present, but you're also yes anding yourself mm-hmm. by moment by moment. You say what it is, and then you react to me and how you feel about me giving that to you. Mm-hmm. Right? And so these are all little yeses, little yes ands to what just happened. And it's the idea of ag- agreement instead of going, no, we didn't take a little charter plane. We took an Uber, you know, right. it's like, it's like it, 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 like you said, you're honoring the other person. Someone. You're, you're humbling your position to, to kind of respect and build upon what they give you rather than going, no, I want to take it this way. So I'm going to say, no, we didn't take that. We took this. And it's like, it's the gift I think of agreement. Here and, yeah. and, and Stephen Kieran will sometimes say, just want what you have, man. Just want what's there, man. Want what you have. That, that, that works across the board. Yeah. That works if you're dealing with your marriage. That works if you're dealing with a team you're trying to manage. That works. I've learned that improv helps you to be all in. Yeah. It helps you to be all in. Yeah, man, it helps all- you be kinder to yourself. It helps you develop empathy. Hmm. Um, it helps you celebrate your mistakes, learn from your mistakes. It helps you reframe mistakes and mm-hmm. how they how can they can do gifts and creative discoveries. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so much good to practicing it. I love yeah. that. What's something you've seen in someone transform that you are just so happy to watch that transformation? Um, there's a guy uh, from the Middle East um, named Vahan, who I was teaching a class uh, to 15 founders in San Francisco, and they all had different companies. And what I really loved about that, we played this game called dolphin training. And the whole point of dolphin training is um, is to show that the audience is on your side. Mm. It, basically, the game is a, a person is in front of a big audience. They have to accomplish a task, but they don't know what the task is. And they have to keep trying things. And the audience is only allowed to go ding if they're getting closer to the objective. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, so they go ding, and they, they're getting closer to, like, you know, moving the ball into the hoop and then sitting down in a chair or whatever the the objective is. And it's like a clowning exercise, but it teaches you commitment. It teaches you to listen to the audience, uh, that the audience is on your side. They want you to succeed. They have empathy for you. There's so many lessons. There's so many lessons in that game. And I remember Vahan, who was a little bit shy a little bit uh, tight, just loosened up. And I, and all I told him before playing the game was, look, the audience is on your side. All you have to do is have fun and listen. Keep checking in. Give them your eyes. Give them your ears. 
try something, then check in and see if it worked or not. And you know what? If it works, great, you know, have emotion. If you get frustrated, that's okay. Show it a little bit. Um, that game also shows if you have a bad attitude, the audience doesn't like it. Mm. Also, if you're trying to be funny, if you're trying to get laughs, if it's coming from a place of fear, yeah. the audience can smell it. They can yeah. sense your, right? Mm. Yeah. And, and they know that you're trying to be funny and you might do something weird and get one or two laughs and then you might yeah. do it again and get one more. But then the audience is like, who is this person? You know, yeah. like they're trying to be funny. You yeah, know, they're trying all, to they, all they want to see you do is behave and, and have emotion and be truthful. And they were delighted. And so Vahan would get a little bit, you know, frustrated at a certain point and we loved it. And we were empathetically reacting to him and being like, Vahan, we want you to succeed, you know, like. And we're like on the edge of our seats. And then he would like get something right and be delighted and we would be delighted. And so, um, yeah, that was just great. Like seeing him transform in one class and, and coming away from it with um, less fear for public speaking yeah, and, yeah. Right, yeah. and real listening to himself and to the audience and being in the moment was really cool to see. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. That's so awesome, Jerry. That's phenomenal. And I think that's just that's a, that's a real testament to the fact that I think improv is for everyone. Again, as an actor, it's it's one of the things that you know when you're training. Sometimes, depending on who's coaching you or who's managing you, they're like, okay, continue to train, continue to do this, do scene study class, do this, make sure you take an improv class. Like sometimes it's it's something we check off. But yeah. honestly, I think this is a wonderful testament to how. Like, as you say this, I'm thinking, like, I've, I've done a lot of volunteer work, and I've, I've worked with, like, battered women. And I'm thinking, you know what? Improv would be great for somebody who's trying to overcome an abusive situation. Improv yeah. would be great for someone who just graduated college and is about to enter the corporate world. Mm -hmm. And you're smart. you got the tools, but it's working with a certain level of people you're not sure about. Improv really is for everybody and can help us in so many different stages of life. If and like, are there any books or resources that you'd like to, you gave us a few, a few um, bits of information and um, yeah. that I'll link below, but, but where can we find some more resources that can kind of help us get, get going on this journey? Sure. So um, I'd say uh, check out the joy of improv on Facebook. Um, that's uh, the little group that I run. We're trying to get nonprofit status right now. Um, we've worked with over 3,000 students in the last two years um, by doing community classes um, and also working in schools uh, with kids. Um, but, you know, it's I'd say just look in your area, Google improv class, go train. If you're in San Francisco, train at Bats Improv. Mm -hmm. If you're in Los Angeles, um, go to Impro Theater. Um, maybe try the intro class at the Groundlings. I love the Groundlings as well. Yeah, I, I, would, say, I would say that, you know. A book that I recommend is Improv Wisdom by Patricia Ryan Madsen. She taught oh, improv. Oh yeah, yeah. She taught uh, improv at Stanford for a long time. I think maybe 30 years. Um, another book I recommend is Second Circle by Patsy Rodenberg, an improviser's book that's about improvisation. There's two that I recommend. One is Impro by Keith Johnstone. Yeah, that's my next book. That's, my That's next, a really yeah. great book. Um, I really recommend Impro. I also recommend um, Improvise by Mick Napier. Okay. So he uh, created the Annoyance Theater, I think with Joe Bill and a few other uh, people. Mick Napier's book is amazing. Um, I think he's so spot on in what he talks about and about being without fear. Um, something that I like to quote is Jim Carrey when he talks about uh, when he was playing Andy Kaufman in Man on the Moon, Jim Carrey said, um, I knew when I was younger and I was doing stand-up comedy and I was um, doing In Living Color and I was doing all this stuff. He's like, I knew that I had this epiphany in the middle of the night where for the audience to be free from concern and to enjoy a story and to have fun, I, as the performer or the storyteller, also have to be free of concern. You have to be fearless in performance and you have to let it go and you can't be perfectionistic. You have to, you have to ground yourself in listening. 
and in your character or in listening to other people on stage and not be fearful because when you're fearful or nervous, you try to be liked. You try to be liked. You try to be funny. You try to um, do all those things and, and you try to, it's it's the organic process. Yeah. And you're not as fun to play with. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. You know, if you're, if you're supporting my ideas and, and, and are having fun, I want to play with you. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're not, and you're a perfectionist, intense ass, then I'm not going to want to play with you. Yeah. Or if, or if you're trying to be funny and trying to be liked, uh, I probably won't want to play with you. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of new improvisers might start, um, trying to find the game. Do you know what I mean by that? I think I do. So they want to like spot a pattern or find the game and double down on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say when you're starting out, just have fun and listen and have emotion. Um, If you want to work on finding the game, great. I think finding the game for me puts me in my head and it makes me analytical. Mm. And what I mean by that is at UCB, they focus on finding the game. I don't think there's anything wrong with finding the game at all. I just think that there's a different way of viewing it or a different way of communicating that. And different teachers that I've worked with have communicated in different ways. For example, I was in Chiang Mai, Thailand this past year teaching workshops. And I also attended a local workshop and the workshop was going great. We were having a lot of fun playing together. We were were just, the improv was really nice. It was really going well. And then we started working on finding the game. And all of a sudden it was like nobody knew how to improvise anymore. And all of a sudden we got in our head and we weren't like emoting. We weren't reacting. Just we another stif- task you guys were trying to complete. We were stiffer because it became analytical. Yeah. What, what I realized two days later, I went to the gym in Chiang Mai and I was at the gym and I only had a hundred baht in my pocket and a towel was 200 baht. I had a hundred baht and I had a thousand baht and I didn't want to make the young lady behind the counter break, break the bill. Because I knew she would, it would be a pain in the ass for her. And so I go, I go up to her and I say, towel, please. 100 baht. And she goes, <laughs> she goes, oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. Like, you know, 200 baht, 200 baht, come ka. You know, and I'm like, okay, uh, <clears throat> 100 baht. <laughs> and she's like, I'm doing like Jedi. <laughs> I'm doing like Jedi mind trick to her, and she's like, no, 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 like crazy American farong, like gringo ass hole. Like, <laughs> basically, she's like, you know, like it's 200 baht, and I'm like, I'm like, mm-hmm. my third and final try. Let me try this I, again. <laughs> try different emotion. I'm like, 100 baht, <laughs> you know, and she's like, she's like, no, no, and her friend is there, this guy who's working behind the counter with her, and I'm like, okay. I give her a thousand baht. She reacts like, oh no, I have to break this bill, you know? And she doesn't know if she can break it and she has to do something. She takes the bill, she's at the cash register. She looks down, she smiles. And then she looks up at me and is like, 1,000 baht. Oh! (laughs) So she, is following the fun. And so she she's oh, in and so all of a sudden this is real life and all of a sudden we are in like a comedic improv scene and then her friend comes up to her and crosses his hand his arms and is like like this like her like her enforcer uh-huh. and, it, and is like mm, 1000 baht. <laughs> <laughs> and then she, and then I'm like, no no that's too much money. All of a sudden she has the status. She's high status. I'm lower status. Mm-hmm. I have to be emotionally changed. She's emotionally changed. She has the thousand bots. She has power over me. I no longer have status as the gym goer with money. She has my money. And I'm like, no, no, no. What, you know, uh, 200 bot, please. 200 bot. Now I'm going <laughs> where we were earlier. And all of a sudden a comedic scene is born and we play it out for like another minute or two. So funny. Before we end it. And I love I, it taught them improv they were just following the fun and that was a pattern that was a game wow but i, but I didn't tell them follow the game and be analytical so if you are in a class that focuses on great game, example yeah if you're if you're in a class that focuses on finding the game and that rattles you or that gets you analytical maybe just think of finding the game as noticing what's happening and noticing what's fun 
and going after what's fun rather mm. than trying to like make a pattern or be analytical or be clever. Don't worry about being clever. Be obvious, have fun, and follow what is most delightful for you. And often what ends up happening is games or patterns do emerge. Mm. Uh, not focusing so hard on that. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense. And that what a wonderful example. I yeah, love we were, that, man. It was like one of my best Thailand experiences was my interaction with them. And for the next couple of weeks of going to that gym, we had like a, we had the shared camaraderie. I'd see them, they'd be like. Connection, connection, all about connection. Yeah, and we, we were friends after that, you know? Oh man, I, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Well, I encourage you guys who are watching, please check out Jared's class, Joy of Improv. It is amazing. This is my second year doing it. I, I, you're so great at teaching it. It's done so much for me personally. And as I'm, I'm starting my journey as an actor, it's, it's helping me so much, but just in terms of anxiety, it's helping me so yeah. much, so much, Jared. Thank, Thank you, you so guys. much. You guys check out all the links below. Jared, you're awesome. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Stay safe in quarantine. Thanks you guys. Too.